Hey folks, welcome back to my channel. Today we're talking about ear stretching yet again. Now I know I've talked about ear stretching a whole bunch on my channel already, and I also have a video with a whole guide on how to stretch safely. But overwhelmingly, when I've been talking about stretching and safe stretching, I've gotten a ton of comments from people going, what about larger sizes? Does this advice apply once I'm stretching like beyond an inch? Is there anything I should be doing differently? No one ever talks about stretching bigger, bigger lobes. Uh, so let's get into it. That's what we're going to talk about all today. Now, if you haven't already, I would strongly suggest watching my guide for regular stretching first, because that is going to give you a lot of the foundation information that we're going to talk about here. I'm going to link it in the comments down below, and I'm also going to link my written ear stretching guide because that's got lots of good information and resources as well. And in short, stretching at larger sizes, like an inch and up, is going to be the same as stretching at smaller sizes. Natural stretching is still going to be the safest method of stretching. That's all you're going to need. Single flare plugs are still going to be what you want to use to stretch with. And you still want to stay away from things like tapers, tape, and low quality jewelry like acrylic or surgical steel and things of that nature. Now it is going to look different as you stretch up beyond an inch are some of the processes that surround stretching. The biggest one being the speed at which you stretch or the sizes at which you go to. For me, I found that over an inch, I was able to stretch in two millimeter increments over about the same time frame. So after about three to five months between sizes, my lobes would be ready to fit two millimeter jumps. Now this only happened once I got up past an inch because of how large my ears already were and because of how much the weight and size of the plugs that I was wearing was allowing my ears to loosen up so much more over time. Now that is not the case for everyone. I actually only knew it was the case for me because once I got, I believe my 28 millimeter plugs was when I popped them in. And when I went to put in my 29 millimeter plugs, literally the whole plug flare and everything went straight through my ear. And I was like, oh, I guess 30 millimeters just gonna fit. And sure enough, that fit perfectly with no pain and no discomfort um, and no tightness or anything like that. Now that's not to say that is the case for everyone. I know many people who have naturally tighter lobes or who have more scar tissue from things like piercing gun piercings or improper stretching techniques that they used when they were at smaller sizes whose ears don't loosen up any faster past an inch. So they still need to stick with millimeter increments and that's perfectly normal. Now, I wouldn't suggest trying to rush or stretch any faster once you're over an inch. I wouldn't suggest like trying to put in a new size every couple of weeks because we understand how lipids regenerate in our body and how that affects the tissue when we're stretching. And we know that even if things seem like they're getting loose quickly, we still wanna give them time to give our skin the proper amount of healthy regeneration before we put our next size in and stretch. And that is gone over in my stretching guide on my blog. Now that being said, listen to your body. If you're at two inches and you go to pop in the next millimeter increment and it's falling right through your ears, you can probably fit a two millimeter jump. But if you try and fit a two millimeter jump and it hurts or it stings or it feels too tight or you have to use too much force to put the plug in, don't do it. And you might be saying to yourself, well, Lynn, why can people at bigger sizes stretch a little bit more at once, but people at smaller sizes can't? That doesn't make any sense. And this all comes down to size and tissue displacement. When we're talking about stretching a piercing, we're stretching the entire diameter of the piercing by a marginal amount every time. When we go up by one millimeter, we're not putting one millimeter of new jewelry just on the top of our lobe or just on the bottom or just on the sides. We are stretching the whole piercing evenly. At an eight gauge or three millimeters, when we are stretching up to our next size, a six gauge, which is four millimeters, we are adding one full millimeter to the overall diameter of our piercing. But at that size, that's a quarter of the overall size of our ear. That's a huge amount for that size of our ear. We're talking about literally one fourth of the percentage of the overall diameter of our lobe. However, when we start getting up to much larger sizes, when we're talking about 28 millimeters, 30 millimeters, 60 millimeters, 
our one millimeter of increase to the overall diameter is a fraction of what our piercing is. We're talking about 1 60th of the overall diameter of our ear. Once you're up into much bigger sizes, it's the whole diameter of the ear that's loosening up as you stretch. And if the diameter that we're working with is 60 millimeters, as opposed to six millimeters, then that loosening that is occurring, happening over the whole diameter of the plug, oftentimes means that it's loosening a little bit more than a millimeter at once for some people. So they can very easily pop in that plug. Now that being said, it is variable body to body. Again, I started stretching my ears, yes, from piercing and piercings, but I was fortunate enough to have learned about natural stretching and to have used natural stretching techniques for my entire stretching process, meaning that my lobes were far healthier than many people who may have used tapers or worn acrylic or even suffered from tears and blowouts. The fact that I stretched safely the whole way gave me the benefit once I got up to those larger sizes that my ears were super comfortable and used to natural stretching. And as they get larger and larger and that whole diameter of my lobe was loosening up to fit jewelry, I realized I was able to comfortably fit larger pieces in. Now that is not always linear either. There was a time period where I had had a friend do some color on my hair for like a class thing that she was doing. She's a hairstylist uh, and I had a bad reaction to one of the products and I ended up with a really bad psoriasis flare up all over the back of my head under my hairline, but also on part of my stretched lobes. And not only did that set my stretching process back quite a bit, and this was probably around, ooh, 32 millimeters maybe, if I had to hazard a guess. I'm terrible with timing. Um, but it not only slowed down my stretching process, I did end up having to downsize to get my ears to calm down, but I did have to use one millimeter increments for just a few sizes, just because my ears were still really upset from that. Uh, and I didn't want to push them too far, too hard. And it was very clear that more than one millimeter was not going to fit for a couple months after that happened. So even for me, that is not linear. The important thing is to listen to your body. So if you go to put in one millimeter plug and it's literally already falling through your ear completely, your lobe feels healthy and comfy and you know that you've waited the appropriate minimum amount of time already, listen to your body and see if that two millimeter increment can fit. Now I wouldn't suggest doing this any smaller than an inch, A, because at those sizes, 25 millimeters and down, the tissue displacement is just not that great. And so it's very rare for us to see someone who can naturally stretch faster than that. And normally they have a medical condition that affects the collagen and elasticity of their skin and allows them to stretch faster. But it's also just far easier at those sizes to cause a lot of permanent damage to your lobes. And there's really, it, there's no reason to risk it for the biscuit. Uh, it is not worth it. Talk to anyone who's had a tear and a blowout and they'll tell you the same. Now I'd be lying if I didn't admit that there's a part of me that is hesitant uh, with this part of the video because I do think there are people who are gonna watch this and just go, Lynn said I can stretch in two millimeter increments. I'm at zero gauge, but I'm gonna start skipping sizes. Uh, and that is not what I'm saying at all. And I don't want it to be interpreted that way. However, I also don't believe in lying to any of my followers and any of the folks that I help. And I definitely 100% used two millimeter increments when my ears got up over an inch and I did so safely, and it was totally fine and appropriate for my ears. I'm not gonna pretend that that's not something that happens, and that's not something that exists, and that's not something that's incredibly common for folks when they get up to larger sizes. You know, when we're talking about really big lobes, 38 millimeters, 40 millimeters, 60 millimeters, one millimeter becomes such a small incremental fraction on a set of 60 millimeter lobes in comparison to a set of 12 millimeter lobes or 20 millimeter lobes. There's just such a massive difference in size there. But at the end of the day, it's about doing what's safe and listening to your body. If a stretch feels painful, if it feels too tight, if you notice secretions and things like that, those are all signs that you've gone up too fast. And oftentimes the damage is already done, you're already gonna deal with scar tissue or even potentially a blowout. So don't risk it, listen to your body. Now, another big consideration when you're stretching very big is sleeping. Obviously, if you're still stretching, sleeping with your jewelry out can sometimes cause your lobes to tighten overnight 
and then you either maintain size or for some people lose size if they haven't correctly naked trained their lobes. I have a whole video about this, by the way, if you're curious about that process. But past an inch, and honestly, even at an inch, sleeping with plugs in gets very awkward. I'm a side sleeper and my 38 millimeter plugs just go like, and like literally cover my whole ear or smush me in the side of the face and get twisted and caught and it's just not comfortable. But for me, while I was stretching, there was no reality where I was gonna be able to sleep with my plugs out and still keep going larger. I was just gonna barely maintain my size um, if I was sleeping with my plugs out. There was no reality where I was gonna be able to sleep with my plugs out and still keep stretching larger. I would maintain size if I trained my lobes to sleep with plugs out, but I definitely wasn't gonna be able to go any bigger. So what do you do? Well, a travel pillow in getting creative with how you sleep is gonna be your best option. Uh, back in the day, I just used a generic travel pillow and I tucked my ear in that little hole. That way my plugs didn't smush my face or my ear all night long. But these days they have companies that make piercing specific pillows. Uh, the Tend piercing pillow is a really phenomenal one that I use. Uh, and depending on the size of your lobe, you could have it made with a custom uh, center hole to fit a larger stretched lobe. And that allows you to sleep with your jewelry in without like completely smushing your poor plug or your face or things like that. But understand that sleeping with jewelry in does carry some of its own risks. Things can get twisted or hurt during the middle of the night and it can just be not a great and comfortable way to sleep sometimes. I have had clients uh, like roll up towels and wrap those to create a surface to sleep in. I've had clients like cut apart their own pillows to create space for sleeping. Uh, you just gotta kind of figure out what works for you, but it's worth noting that as you're stretching to larger sizes, sleeping definitely does become an adventure, an experience, if you will. And now once you get to your goal size, naked train your lobes, especially if you're going big, just train them to sleep without jewelry in. That way you don't have to deal with these problems anymore. It's worth it. I have a whole guide to it here on my channel. Uh, but hopefully you get through the stretching process and sleeping with your plugs in is not the end of the world. Although it's definitely pretty uncomfy sometimes. Now a big question people have as they stretch larger is sourcing jewelry. It's very common for folks who end up with very large ears to end up with lobes that are either a little bit thinner if they end up just with naturally thin lobes or they've had thin spots over the years or to notice their lobes getting increasingly thick. Sometimes this is due to blowouts. Um, blowouts can make extra tissue on the back of the ear that takes up space on the wearable of the plug or just as a side effect of the large stretching process and the way it reshapes the lobe tissue as it's displaced over the plug, your ears sometimes end up getting a little thicker and finding plugs in appropriate increments for stretching, single flare plugs, and custom wearables can be really difficult when you're talking about going to very large sizes. For that, of course, you know I'm gonna say it, Glassware Studios is amazing. They do custom wearables, they do custom flare sizes, they will make everything to your body's specifications. You can email them and see about getting a custom stretching kit made with the size increments that you need for where you're stretching to. They're just super phenomenal. And of course, you can use the code LIN for 20% off. Now for some folks, glass at larger sizes is just not reasonable. If you are talking about stretching to three, four, five inches, glass is gonna get very big and very heavy and very cumbersome for some folks. So Delrin and PTFE is really, really fantastic for stretching in much larger sizes. Glass will still get you there, I would say easily up to two, maybe even three inches depending on your ears. But if I'm being realistic, if you're talking about going to five or six inches, glass may end up getting a little bit heavy or a little bit cumbersome for you. If Dollar Runner PTFE is your thing, I cannot suggest Andy Dunn at South Shore Adornments highly enough. He is an absolutely phenomenal maker who has been making pieces for the community for many, many years. I wanna say at least a decade now, if not longer. Andy, you're old if you watch this. <laughs> um, but he does a ton of stuff for folks with extremely large stretched piercings. He does a lot of stuff for very large lobes and he does a lot of custom pieces for unique large gauge stretched piercings like stretched bridges, stretched navels, and he makes arguably the best transcrotal jewelry in the industry, hands down, bar none. Andy is a brilliant, brilliant maker. 
So if you're stretching up to those really big sizes and you want something that's going to be affordable, that's going to lightweight, comfortable, and can be custom made to all of your specifications, South Shore Adornments, Andy Dunn, super, super amazing. Aside from that, stretching at those larger sizes is genuinely still the same as stretching at smaller sizes. You want to give your lobes at least three months to let that tissue heal and mature fully in between sizes. You want to go slow and listen to your body. Massage is still super beneficial for keeping your lobes happy and healthy, moisturized, and just doing well during the stretching process. And of course, it is about the journey, not the destination. So enjoy stretching while it lasts. Take your time with it, enjoy each new size, uh, but I wouldn't try and get super hyper focused into getting specifically just to this one size, especially if your goal is to go super large over an inch. Something like that takes a lot of time, it takes many, many years, it takes a lot of patience, and there's really no cutting corners with ear stretching. You're just going to end up with blots and tears. So if you want happy, healthy, and huge lobes, you got to just go slow and go safe. I hope this helps for folks who are thinking about stretching much larger and just looking for some advice about that process. If you have any further questions or there's any other elements of ear stretching that you want to see me talk about, please let me know in the comments down below. Did you like this video? If you're planning on going big, was this helpful for you? Let me know that as well. Thanks as always for hanging out and chatting and I cannot wait to sit down and talk with y'all again soon.